Hello, my name is Boyan Mitov, the president of Mitov Software, and in this video we'll demonstrate some of our products and their capabilities. On the screen you can see our website at www.mitov.com where you can find more information. For this demo, we'll start with FireMonkey form application. I have already placed few FireMonkey components, a 3D viewport, round cube, light material and light source, all already arranged for us. We'll add timeline, double click on it, open the timeline editor and dock it. We'll add two real channels. For the first real channel we'll add cubic spline, the same for the second one. For the first one we'll add two points for the spline. We'll set value of 10 for the first point, minus 10 for the second point, final value for the period of minus 10 and starting value for the channel of minus 10. For the second channel, for its cubic spline, we'll add three points. We'll set different time for the first point and value of 5. Same for the second point and value of minus 5. 10 for the third point, minus 10 for the final point. We also will set initial value of minus 10. Next we'll add live bindings to the cube to allow us to control it with the timeline. For both X and Y position. To make the cube more interesting we'll play video on it. To do that we'll add AVI player an image display so we can preview the video outside of the cube. For the live material source we'll add new visual live binding. For its texture we'll connect the first animation channel to the X position, second channel to the Y position and we'll set the timeline to loop. We also will put the video on loop so it will play again after that. We will connect the video to the image display and to the texture. We also need to select a video to play. We can preview it right inside the component. Let's test it. You can see the video playing inside the cube while it's being animated. Next we'll add another animation. For this one we'll add only one real channel and again we add cubic spline. We'll add a couple of points. For the first one we'll add value of 80 and minus 20 for the second one. Again we will add two live bindings for the cube, X and Y rotation. We also add on click event and for the animation we will add multi-sync pin for its start procedure. So we can start the animation with clicking on the cube. We will set the animation to disabled rearrange the components. We'll hold the start pin with don't click event and the X and Y pins to the animation timeline. We'll make it even more interesting by adding mass effect on one of the axes. To include the effect, we will connect it to the Y input pin of the rotation 
and the mass itself to the animation timeline. Let's run and test it. You can see that the cube is rotating and wobbling if we click on it. Next, we will make the video more interesting. We will add a swirl effect. We will connect it to the AVI player and the output to the two displays. Let's run it. You can see the video has been swirled inside the cube. We can preview the effect inside the filter. Next we will add some drawing layers over the video. We will add a gauge. We will add a fire effect and we will associate the fire effect with the gauge. We will add few controls. We'll add spectrum and PPM meter. We'll set lower order for the spectrum. Connect the gauges to our PPM meter. The waterfall to our spectrum. The audio input of the spectrum to the audio of our video the video of the drawing layer to the sword video and the output of the drawing layer to both displays. For our matrix display we'll add external image display and we'll hook the sword image to it. Finally we connect the PPM meter to the audio of the file. Let's test the application. You can see that all the elements of the application are working properly. We have PPM meter in both controls, we have waterfall, we have effects inside uh, both the cube and our image display and we are displaying video inside the LED matrix. Next we'll add image display inside our Angular gauge we'll make it bigger and we'll set it to stretch. We can also add a clock, a thermometer and an LED. We'll connect the newly added image display to the process video and we'll connect the clock to the progress of the playing video file. Let's test this. You can see that it is all working properly. We have the video playing as background, we have the thermometer and the clock working accordingly. We can also add more layers to the LED matrix. As example we can add a digital clock and a thermometer. Again everything is working properly together. To briefly look at some of the demos included with the libraries. Here are some of the audio lab demos. They include symbol player, audio display, audio processing, audio recording, audio generation, audio mixer, Cine Adventure. What's Neptune? I would drive. Custom filters which allow you to edit audio inside your code by handling events, audio compression, volume monitoring, plotting wave data, and playing the file. Good and evil reunite. My spirit has been trapped here in this tomb. 
VST plugins, including VST3. Video Lab has simple video player, video filters, geometric transformations, various ways to combine video, including effects such as picture in picture. The library supports alpha channel so we can have alpha transparency of course custom filters where we can edit the data inside code in many different ways capturing bitmap for processing video histogram processing bitmaps Creating video file from bitmaps, transparent colors, including simple chroma key effect, free frame plugin supports, free frame GL plugin supports, video compression, custom painting cover video from inside the code, vector scope. Remap filters, video effects with drawing layers, and many, many, many more filters effects, plugins and features of VideoLab. Here are a few demos from SignalLab, Signal Generation, Low Pass Filter, Forward and Reverse Fourier, List of two figures. Custom filters. Creating and managing data inside code. And many, many, many others. Quick look at the Vision Lab demos. It is a library for computer vision, a candy edge detection, hawk lines and segments. Hawk circles, finding contours both inner and outer, and their bounding rectangles, target tracking with optical flow, phase detection, robust features, people detection with Hawk. Active background subtraction, chamfer matching contours, and video layers integration of the computer vision components. Allowing you to create computer vision applications without writing a single line of code just by connecting open wire pins. A very brief look at one of the artificial intelligence demos of Intelligence Lab using RBF classifier to train and recognize faces of different people. You can see that we have attempted to recognize the faces based on this training on the left. Again, a very brief look at a couple of the instrument lab demos, the progress bar, SAM engages, 
spectrum display matrix display composite components and many other demos and components included in our instrumentation lab a look at a visual live binding demo for database applications in this case we have database component connected with variety of other components and this application contains zero lines of code let's run the application you can see that we can control in many different ways many of the controls and that does not require any code This application was created just in a few minutes. OpenWire Studio is a graphical development environment that does not require any coding. You can create, develop and run complex video, audio, digital signal processing, computer vision, artificial intelligence, Boolean logic and many other types of applications with it. It includes advanced debugging and live editing functionalities allowing you to modify the design as it runs with full and do redo functionality available even on the running design we are also working to fully integrate OpenWire Studio with Delphi allowing you to use OpenWire designs directly from inside your Delphi project Visuino is a special OpenWire Studio version that allows you to visually program Arduino boards once when you have created the design with the available components you can generate compile and upload a sketch to Arduino we're working to integrate this product with the rest of our products and with Delphi as well this concludes this extremely brief overview of over some of our products and their functionalities here is the list of uh, our current products they include Video Lab, Video Processing Library, Audio Lab, Audio Processing Library, Signal Lab, Digital Signal Processing Library, Vision Lab, Computer Vision Library, Plot Lab, Data Visualization Library, Instrument Lab, Visual Instrumentation Library, Intelligence Lab, Artificial Intelligence Library, Logic Lab, Boolean Logic Library, Animation Lab, Universal Animation Timeline Based Library, Visual Live Binding, Universal Visual Live Binding Library, Meet to Front Time, a free Delphi library, OpenWire Studio, which we saw, a graphical development environment for Windows, Visuino, a graphical development environment for Arduino. We also maintain two open source libraries, OpenWire and IGDI Plus. Please visit our website 
download and enjoy our products. Thank you for listening. Uh, we have been uh, going slowly to them, so uh, from all the products uh, currently uh, Animation Lab is ported to cross-platform, Logic Lab is uh, cross-platform, Intelligence Lab is uh, cross-platform. Plot Lab is uh, about 90% done in cross-platform. Uh, Signal Lab is somewhere at about 40% uh, uh, ported the process. Uh, Audio Lab and Video Lab, they're both at uh, they're probably 20-30% supporting effort. Uh, visual Light Bindings is uh, fully cross-platform, need to front time is co uh, fully cross-platform. So, uh, yeah, they, 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 they are slowly, I mean, getting uh, ported one at, at a time. Logic Lab is fully cro cross-platform. So, yeah, it, it's, it's a huge effort and uh, it, take its, it takes its time uh, to be properly ported across all the platforms. Yep. Uh, what audio formats uh, does the Audio Lab support? Well, currently in uh, the latest versions we have uh, FFmpeg support with it, which means that it supports practically all the audio formats. It comes with some carryouts, uh, however. Uh, some of the audio formats uh, being covered by patterns and uh, being proprietary. Uh, if you decide to use them based on FFmpeg, uh, you have to be careful about uh, not violating any of the patterns. Uh, MPT used to be very tough on uh, patent regulation. They seem to have uh, loosened somewhat. Uh, so nowadays, uh, if you don't generate large amount of revenue, uh, you probably will be perfectly fine using uh, MP3 and not violating the patent. But in any case, that's something that has to be checked uh, when you work with MP3 or MP4 in, uh, on the video side, for example. Other than that, practically all, I mean, almost any audio or video format that is currently available uh, is uh, supported through the FFM pack if anything. Uh, of course, the direct show is also supported, uh, so any direct show comic that you have uh, will also work. And uh, the other uh, uh, video for Windows is supported. So, I mean, the options are huge in uh, both audio and uh, video in terms of almost any format you can think of. Yeah, and uh, it was great that you showed the Visuino uh, again, you did a sneak peek during Delphi week. Uh, Alf is asking, do you have plans for Raspberry Pi, Banana Pi, and other uh, of these systems on a on a uh, systems on on a board? Absolutely, that is uh, the plan. Arduino seems to be the most popular one, and uh, that's and, and that's the one I have. <laughs> Accidentally. So that's the one that is first supported, but uh, the plan is definitely to support all of them. And then um, Craig is asking, he said, OpenWire looks great for audiovisual applications, but what about, or could, could someone create real-world manufacturing components for, for scales, temperatures, belts, gates, you know, manufacturing lines, and so on? Is well, uh, we actually have a few products that are not announced because they are in development, and some of them have been in development for a while. Uh, but we have a, a control app, which uh, is for industrial process control. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it has a partial OPC support, and it has controllers like PID and uh, relay controllers and uh, other stuff. I mean, accidentally, my background is from industrial automation. Uh, that's, that's what my degree is in. Uh, so, definitely, OpenWire uh, has been used in the past for this purpose, and uh, the plan is, uh, yes, uh, the plan is definitely to use it even more so in the future and to have dedicated library for that as well. Whenever time permits with uh, all of the other development efforts that are going on. But someone could, 
I mean, you can write code, right? So if you're using OpenWire and you want to connect some some device, whatever that might be, uh, you've got your Delphi code, your C++ code, right? That is correct. I mean, uh, hooking, hooking into uh, Open line. First of all, hooking it all into the existing library. This is quite easy because we showed already in the demo. I mean, in the video, um, that there are generic filters and there are generic generators. And you drop one of them, double click on it, you go into the on data handling event, and there you can populate your own data and that data gets picked up and gets plugged into the open wire or you can get data out of open wire that is inside your code. Uh, so yeah, I mean if you have a third party library, which we do all the time, uh, we get the data from the third party library or from low level code or from some device and you send it uh, to open wire uh, for processing to the rest of the components. Uh, on, a, on another hand, you can also quite easily write a new open wire based component and plug it into the whole architecture and we do that all the time as well. So there are plenty of options if you want to write a little bit of code to plug into the architecture. I mean, the, this is quite open, very, very actually open architecture and open wire itself at low level has been uh, free and open source. Uh, so that's the, the options are always open and always on the table. And then um, let's see. Uh, Richard just says fantastic webinar. So many components, so little time. Keep up the great work. That's really Thank you. Um, and then Alf is asking: Can end users can end users also manipulate controls and connections? With open wire, is there an open wire runtime? I guess he's asking, or is it only possible to build that into your applications like you had done? Well, the answer is that yes, they can do that. Uh, they can write their own graphical editor. We also offer under special licensing agreements. Uh, we offer to some partners that are open wire design experience plus our advanced. Uh, Property, edit, uh, property and object inspector editors plus our two bar box. Uh, all of the functionalities that are available in uh, OpenWire Studio are available to selected partners uh, for embedding in their applications. So if they add that to the application, then the end users will be able to, to hook and make these type of connections within their application over the life, even over the life running uh, uh, data and application, the same way as I demonstrated it in OpenWire Studio. So, yeah, I mean, if somebody has this need to have this functionality in their application, they can contact us, uh, we can negotiate a uh, licensing agreement for the functionality, and we can license it to them. That, that, that's something we do with some of our partners already. Uh, so Ken asked a question, uh, can you use these components, he, he asked are these FMX or VCL controls, but I think maybe for some of the visualizations and other things, what can work with, uh, with VCL and what can work with FMX or both? Actually under Windows the controls are available both in uh, VCL and Farmland. So uh, the demonstration which I did, the first part, the first 10 minutes of the video, everything was done in Farman. Uh, in the second half of the video, I demonstrated some of the uh, demo projects and uh, uh, they were all done in VCL. So we demonstrated both capabilities. And you had mentioned earlier today that you're also working on just cross-platform in general, right, for FireMonkey apps or? Console. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, uh, and I, I love, uh, I need to explore more of the, uh, the Boolean lab. I, I remember taking Boolean algebra, oh, probably 40 years ago, I think. To well, it's, uh, it's fun to model hardware with it and uh, stuff like that, but generally speaking, I mean, implement logic with it. And for the vision lab, can I, can I just hook 
a camera or is it is it JPEG pictures? Can I hook? Uh, just ca yeah, yeah, camera. It, it's a live uh, stream. You can hook a camera and you can immediately have uh, face recognition, or you can do other type of, I mean, uh, like uh, target tracking or extract all those features for, let's say, 3D reconstruction and uh, this this type of stuff. I mean, yeah, it's out of the box. And I forget. I think. Before I've asked you what uh, APIs for the vision part is it OpenCV or something else? No, it's it's a uh, uh, you some of the components, few of the components they do use OpenCV. The rest is fully implemented actually by us in Delphi, and that means that uh, yeah, it's it's uh, pretty much uh, ready to be ported uh, to cross platform. We simply need to. Uh, uh, to get the capturing components and players and things like that done uh, before we make, let's say, Visual Lab available cross-platform. But uh, from a practical standpoint, uh, many of the components already compile and they probably will execute perfectly fine uh, cross-platform. We just haven't packaged them yet. I mean, it's so much stuff that needs to be done. And so little time. Yep, I understand. but. Also, you have so many different uh, lab packs of components. It's it's impressive the number of. Uh, is there? Oh, a, do you have a, a idea of the total number of components so far? Uh, there are a few hundred. Uh, I mean, I lost count at uh, three hundred long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think they have exceeded six hundred components already, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was, uh, the, the complexity of maintaining and supporting all of that and uh, keeping it uh, with uh, as good uh, quality as possible is uh, quite daunting. I mean, the build process alone uh, takes well over three hours for uh, everything to be properly built and generated into installs, including all of the compiles of demos and different platforms and products and everything. So, yeah, it's it's a from a logistical standpoint, it's a huge challenge. Well, thank you so much, Boyan, for being on the Embarcado Technology Partner Spotlight. Thank you for uh, organizing COVID today. It's 